In last week's episode, we enjoyed exploring Cornwall's river inlets like in Foy, where we were surprised by its cozy setting and beautiful houses along the riverside. We also solved our battery monitor problems before heading to Helford River, a place a fellow sailor had really recommended. Even though we did have a lot of rain, there were always short sunny weather windows to check out the beautiful hidden corners. The very sheltered harbour Falmouth, which has by the way already often been a starting point for Atlantic crossings, supplied us with groceries and a new fishing rod. Gillen Creek was a perfect anchorage for a few days before our journey over the English Channel to France. The sailing trip was quite roly, but the good winds allowed us to make some speed. Arriving at the Ile du Champ, still dressed with full rain gear and winter clothes, Brittany welcomed us with summer temperatures, a free mooring buoy at the Bay du Stiff, as well as wild and unique landscape that we explored with some rented bikes. The next day we headed for the mainland of the Bretagne and arrived in Brest. As you can see we have just left the Ile du Chon and uh, want to go through the channel south to go to Brest. And uh, around this corner you have one of the strongest uh, currents. Um, that's why you really have to pay attention that you're there on time because they can be up to four to five knots. Yeah, Tudor would go backwards probably because we don't have any wind. Arriving in Brest, Le Port de Ricor, we went for a walk in the city and around the harbour. Dating from 1993, there's an overview of world records over the Atlantic and around the world, even against winds and currents to be found at the harbour. The sailing record around the world is held by Team IDEC, led by Francis Joyon, whose team made it around in 40 days, 23 hours and 30 minutes in 2017. Philippe Monet, born in 1988, still holds the world record in men's solo multi-hull around the world against winds and currents in 151 days, 19 hours and 54 minutes. The record across the Atlantic is held by Pascal Bidegori from the sailing vessel Banque Populaire 5, whose team made it to the American coast in 3 days, 15 hours, 25 minutes and 48 seconds in 2009. Just for comparison. We expect to take around 24 days, if everything goes well. In Brest we welcomed our first patrons on board, who were spending their holidays in Odierne. We spent a great sunny day at sea, with Ilya making pancakes for everyone and fishing in front of a beautiful scenery. In the harbour in Odian, we even got to teach Franka and Yannick how to steer the dinghy with paddles and the old outboard engine, which were so much fun. We spent another day in Odian and were delighted by the beautiful beaches in this region of France. We even got to go surfing a little bit and had a stroll over the market with its fresh products. <laughs> Tu 
ton petit sourire qui couvre la paille à que la première de nous deux Viens si tu veux que je te traîne, que je te traîne Filled with nice French music beats, we left our berth heading for an island archipelago west of the Pointe du Raz. We found a sheltered anchorage for ourselves just east of the island's lighthouse. Okay. So we are anchoring in front of the Ile de Seine. And there's a little bit of action going on in the cockpit here. Ilya, what is going on? So yesterday I caught some mackerel and today I'm gonna smoke them. So this is my, um, my smoking device. So actually it goes like you put some, some spiritus here inside, inside the burners. Yeah. And then you have this, this smoke meal here down. Yeah, it just, just go like this. It just, just covered the surface a little bit. And then this falls. This one goes there, and here we have wonderful mackerel fillet. I put them uh, 45 minutes in salt, and now I put some some herbs and some pepper on it. And, and now we're gonna. This oven is uh, it's really nice it, for for camping smoking. I tried it before, and it went well, really good. So okay, so they're burning. This one's got there. Okay, so now we have to wait about, oh, I think, 20 minutes and then we have a look what, how they look like, huh? And what are you going to do in the next 20 minutes, Ilya? Gonna drink a beer, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wait for the mackerel. Okay, let's have a look uh, what, what we've got here now. Wow! <coughs> that looks really nice. I think they're done, huh? Let's let's have a check with them. Take the small one. Out. What a nice macro meat! Mmm. Mmm. Lekker, lekker. Oh, this is a nice mokra. Okay, today we have some boat insulation stuff to do. So, actually we took a second refrigerator with us. And, um, yeah, fits down here under a seat in the saloon. But the problem is, um, sometimes it gets so hot because there's no air circulation inside so what I thought I'm gonna cut here the hole inside yeah and then we're gonna put this nice thing down here and then there will be more air circulation because this one is actually our should be our freezer on the Atlantic crossing. Then we could take some deep freeze things with us.
Diana. Hello. <laughs> Life goes far deep there inside, huh? All the water leaked in here when it was raining so hard in England and uh, I already wiped it away but there was some mold on the on the wood here and you can see that we really had to have to get uh, something done here. Anna. Yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. I was sent at the mast up today because I was naughty. Didn't pay attention to Ilya's rules. Let's see how long I'm still stuck up here. <laughs> I'm just up here, high in the mast. Um, I was the one who had to do it to go up here. Um, I am up here because our antenna was a little bit loose and uh, I had to fix it a little bit. I had to tape it a little bit so it loosen, doesn't loosen up again. Um, it, you can put it on or screw it in like a screw and it had loosened a little bit. And then up here we had another problem with our lights. Um, uh, when we had put up the mast in Kiel, uh, we did, hadn't paid attention to the way the lights were. And the green light was on the left side and the red light on the other side and everything was twisted around. So we were never able to use that um, when we were sailing out at night because the other ships would have been uh, totally confused by our strange lightning. So that's also something I had to fix up here. And in the meanwhile, I also had a look at beautiful landscapes up here. The lighthouse of Ile de Seine right behind me. Ne, dann scheint es hier eine Menge Hummer zu geben. Ha? Das ist ein Riesenhummer. Glenan Archipelago and uh, next to the island uh, San Nicola at the anchorage 
uh, it's quite a tricky thing because normally there is here um, 0 0.4 meters water uh, at shot uh, the chart datum is 0 0.4 and uh, yeah well we have 1.6 meter uh, draft but uh, yeah as you can see we're here <laughs> uh, that's just because we have at the moment we have nip tide and during the lowest nip tide it's still like 1.6 meter above chart datum so it's like in total 1.9 2.0 meters uh, water depth here so it's like a half a meter under Tudor's keel so I think we're gonna be alright otherwise we will see tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock <laughs> if we are still <laughs> still uh, swimming or <laughs> Or we are ground, huh? Yeah, so here we are, and this is zero, zero point four. Yeah. Thank you for watching our episode. We hope you enjoyed the spectacular views in the Bretagne and hope to have you on board again next time. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Please also support us by becoming our Patreon crew, supporting our filming activities and improving our video equipment. For more information on our voyage along the European coast, have a look on our website blended in below. See you again next week.